welcome back to the Proverbs 31 Morning Show. I'm Ashley Jackson, and I'm here with my friend and coworker, Maddie Vincent. Hey, everyone. Today is Thursday, July 15th, 2021, and we are so glad that you're here tuning in to the Proverbs 31 Morning Show. Leave us a comment and let us know where you're tuning in from. We love getting to know our morning show friends. Yes, already you guys are popping in the comments. We're watching right now. So we're seeing there's Bethany from Michigan. There's Kathy from Texas. We just want to say welcome to everyone. So keep letting us know where you're watching from. And we also wanted to let you know that we have a special Facebook group for our friends who watch the morning show. And we're going to put the link in the comments for you guys to be able to join that. But we have special bonus content for you that we pop in there. And so you don't want to miss that. There's going to be extra content from today. There was extra content from last month, special verses that are shared, talking about what was going on in the morning show. So you want to go over there and join that community. All the good things. Yes. <laughs> um, also, we can't get too far ahead of ourselves, Ashley, before we tell them about what we did last month. I know. Last month, we had our first, or we didn't have our first. This was our second <laughs> yes. online conference. Yeah. We did She Speaks Online. It's our communicators conference. It is for writers, speakers, leaders in ministry, and we hosted it last month online. Yep. It was so fun. Mm. Ashley actually hosted the conference for two of the days, <laughs> yeah. which yep. was awesome. So as our resident She Speaks expert right here on the Proverbs 31 Morning Show, tell me what your favorite part was. You know what I really love about She Speaks is it's if you want to be a writer or a speaker, it is a lot of practical things that you can really do. We talked about in, like Instagram, social media, which, you know, we are partial to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's also content from Crystal Heaven, Evans Hurst did a talk about how to even monetize and there's just really practical ways that you can take your message your story mm -hmm. and get it out in the world to affect people through change yeah, yeah it's awesome and when we say your message we're just talking about your story like what's God teaching you what's mm -hmm. God doing in your life and how can you use that story to help women or men or whoever you're talking right. to around the world it's awesome and we don't want to miss it so if you're thinking I wish I could have gone to that conference. It's not too late. We do have a post-conference mm. special going on. You can get all four keynotes. You can get six breakout sessions and 12 bonus workshops. Yeah. So we're going to put a link in the comments below so you can check it out. And if you're like, I don't know if I need all of that content, you can actually catch Lisa Turker's keynote mm. here on Facebook. Just go to our videos and you can find the keynote there for free. Yeah, and it was excellent. You want to do that. It was excellent. Another thing that we wanted to let you know is we have a great study coming up with First Five, and we are studying Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Or <laughs> Habakkuk. Or... Anybody know how to say Habakkuk? <laughs> I'm from the South, so I'm going to say Habakkuk. Yeah. <laughs> so you say it however you want, but we want to tell you the title of this study. It is called, Not According to Plan, How We Can Trust God When He Seems Unfair or Silent. Woof. Yeah. I need that study. When yeah. does it start? So it starts August 9th. We do have a study guide that goes with it. So you can get that through the link in the comments, get your book, get all ready. And it's going to be an amazing study with a, obviously a great topic. Yeah. Mm. And you can get the first five apps for free in mm. your app store, which is awesome. If you want to take the study a little bit deeper, you can check out our study guides, yeah, which are great. really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, hey, I don't know if you guys know this about Proverbs 31, but we're actually a nonprofit organization. Yeah. So all the things that we do, our free online Bible studies, the free First Five app, all the content that you see on social media, our resource library, it's all made possible because women like you come alongside us mm -hmm. and partner with us every month. So if you're interested in becoming a monthly partner with Proverbs 31, we're also going to put a link in the comments and you can check out how you can make that happen. Well, Maddie, I am very excited about our special guest today. We have with us Kaylee Olson, who is the Director of Creative Programming here. And we love Kaylee, and she's going to tell you more about what she does here. But before she comes on, we want to show you a little video all about Kaylee. What's up, guys? My name is Kaylee Olson, and I'm the Director of Creative Programming here at Proverbs 31 Ministries. But I think working at Proverbs is going to be different for everybody that you ask. But for me, um, it's a combination of being flexible and planning ahead and kind of dancing between the two of those all the time. Um, it's challenging in the best way. I think I'm in my sweet spot, and I love it. 
uh, looks like almost. Yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> just be gone. Now you look like a ninja. Now you look like a ninja. That video made you look especially I fun. Just, what we talked about earlier, Ashley has the spiritual gift of just uh, mining for content <laughs> everywhere, and she pulled that together, and I watched, and I was like, I don't know where you found all of this. <laughs> the turtleneck. The turtleneck, the turtleneck thing. Turtleneck. I feel like the, the goob in me is it just came out. You all saw that That's side. That's what we love about okay, it. I know. Most, I know. More importantly than the turtleneck, can we talk about your dog? Oh, mm -hmm. yes, my dog. That was my dog on camera that you saw. Yeah. Uh, she is a four-year-old dachshund. Uh, she has a very uh, big personality. <laughs> we love Penny. Yeah. She's she's my buddy. I love when you put her ears in the middle. I know, I know. And it would be fun to have her here, but then she would be the star of the show, and then we wouldn't actually true, talk about what we true. came here to talk yeah. about today. It's true. <laughs> That's okay. Well, we're so excited that you're here. Will you tell Thank everyone you. a little more just about what you do here? Sure. Uh, well, like I said earlier, I'm the director of creative programming here at Proverbs 31, and I wear a lot of hats, but uh, the three main things that I do are, uh, one, work on the marketing team, uh, with a lot of different people and kind of help oversee the overarching uh, programming in terms of like scheduling what's happening in the ministry in terms of marketing. I work with a lot of project managers there and I have a lot of fun. Um, I also produce events like She Speaks yes. uh, behind the scenes more so, uh, but this set design, like y'all, how cute is the background here? So like it's so cute. comment in the chat if yeah. you like it because <laughs> our team like spray painted all these books. Uh, a girl, a gal you can't see on our team her name is Victoria Smith. She's the brains behind all this stuff. And now we get to use it here. Yay, it's so cute. I know, I love um, it. And then the other thing I do is produce and co-host the Proverbs 31 Ministries podcast with yes. Meredith Brock. Which we love. We yeah. love the podcast. Do <laughs> we fun. have any podcast listeners oh, watching? Yeah. Us Leave know. us a comment and let <laughs> yeah. us know. That would be fun. Um, okay, Kaylee. Maddie. We're going to play a little game. Are okay. you up for it? I'm so down. Are you guys up for it? Because yes. we're going to include you in this game. <laughs> Ashley, do you want to explain? Okay, so this is what we're going to do. There's going to be a little slide that comes up and it's going to be a fill in the blank so we want you guys to answer in the comments let us know what you would fill in your blank and we're going to answer as well um, i'll go first to kind of get us started so the blanks say even when blank a hardship that we faced god made a way by blank in a way that god showed up that's great so yeah this is going to help us really reflect on the goodness of god even yeah. when things mm -hmm. have been hard yeah so the first thing that comes to mind, it's always the hardest, I feel like, examples that pop into your mind because they were so extreme. But for me, it was even when we didn't have enough money at one point to buy groceries, God made a way by prompting a friend to give us more than enough money without her even knowing that we needed it. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. That's an amazing God yeah. story, yeah. actually. He is yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, I think mine would be even after a really devastating heartbreak, God came alongside of me and gave me hope for future. Love that. Love that. What about you, Kaylee? Okay. Mine is, even when I went through a devastating loss, God made a way by helping me heal and share my healing journey with others. Wow. That's like such a powerful topic. It's why we're here today. And we know that so many have walked through this path. And if mm -hmm. you guys don't follow Kaylee on social media, um, we do, and sh her Instagram handle is at Kaylee Olson if you want to check her out. Minus the O at the end. The o. Oh. O-L-S-N. Okay, yes, without know. the O. I do the, the same Olsen. thing as my husband, and he did that, and so I, you know, yeah, leave and cleave, <laughs> kind of copy him, and so, <laughs> I yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> but you've been sharing so openly about this struggle that mm -hmm. you've walked through, and God has made a way. But mm -hmm. that couldn't have been easy to start doing. Yeah. And so can you tell us what prompted you to start sharing about that? Yeah. Well, we talked about this the other day, and I had a nice answer, like, all typed out. And then yesterday I was scrolling through the Instagram, and I saw uh, Compel Training, which is our writer's training platform, mm -hmm. posted mm -hmm. this uh 
graphic online. I was like, okay, I'm stealing this. It says, someone needs to hear how Jesus held you through the hardest season of your life in order to know that they can make it through theirs. Mm -hmm. And I think, well, it really kind of speaks to what we do here at Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Like you guys know, sitting under Lisa Turkhurst's leadership, who Mm -hmm. so openly and willingly shares what God is doing in her life, kind of like makes it easier for people like us to Mm. also want to share or be prompted to share because we see what God is doing through her Mm. and we might not have the same platform that she does, but I do have people that I can reach and I can share with too. And so I just wanted to share a little bit like bits and pieces of my journey along the way, because I knew after sharing with some friends or posting about it initially on social media, just to Mm. let people know, Hey, I'm going through this. I got so many DMS from Mm. people who said, I really wish that I would have shared this with people. It's been six years and I haven't talked about it or um, even 20 years ago and I never told anybody about it. And so I just, I wanted to share some of my journey, but not all of my journey. Yeah, Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think that it's really important. On Proverbs, like our social media platforms, Mm -hmm. we get comments and direct messages all the time of women Mm -hmm. who have experienced Mm -hmm. miscarriage and loss. And I just don't think people are really talking about it. No, they're not. Um, And so I'd love to know from you, Kaylee, what is something that women who are walking through this struggle with the most? Mm. Yeah. Uh, I think that they struggle with feeling unseen and misunderstood. Right. And so I think the reason they struggle with these, and even I struggle with this too, is whenever you hear the word miscarriage or maybe this has happened to you and you go to the doctor and it's traumatic and I mean everybody's had a different experience with it but you leave with a a doctor's note like this and it just says you know a summary of what happened was miscarriage but that doesn't really explain the extent of the trauma and the pain that you're going through because I've heard a baby's heartbeat at five and a half at five and a half weeks that early on and so when a baby's heart stops beating the life no longer exists inside of you. And even if that baby was the size of a jelly bean or, you know, that you have those little apps that tell you, oh, it's the size of a strawberry now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how big it is. The reality is, is that you once had a life in you and now you don't. And what actually happened was a death. It was a miscarriage, but the reality is, is that it was a death. Mm -hmm. But whenever you walk out of the doctor's office or the hospital and all you've got is a piece of paper that says you had a miscarriage, Mm -hmm that's the only proof that you have that something horrible happened to you. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, like Maddie, I know later you're going to talk about the loss of your mom and kind of how you can relate to that. But like you had your mom with you for years and Mm -hmm. that was proof that you had a mother. But then when somebody goes through a miscarriage, you feel so unseen because only you Mm. and maybe your husband and maybe those closest to you, if it happened early on, know that this life was inside of you. And then it's just, it's, gone Mm. but then no one really understands how to help you with that because Mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like it was ever a life because it's not treated that way it's treated as more of a transactional thing like like you got a tooth pulled and you know oh you'll get over it but you don't you know it's you go through a grieving process and so I think whenever people don't understand that part of it um And especially if you live in a culture where maybe your family is a little bit more hush-hush and you don't really bring up your pain or in your community, if you're not surrounded by people who have been through that, then no one really understands. And so you stuff it. And so it makes you feel even more unseen and misunderstood because you are struggling with this grief and this pain from the loss that you've gone through. But when someone else doesn't understand that, there's no common language or context Mm. for sympathy for that person yeah Mm -hmm. and it's so true that if you haven't walked through it Mm -hmm. you can't validate it yeah and people though I'm sure you found tried Mm -hmm. yeah and I I always too like wonder like what do we say you know Mm -hmm. when even when someone's going through that kind of grief you know Mm -hmm. and I think like what were the things that were helpful that Mm -hmm. people said during that time, but also what were the things that were hurtful? Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think, like, hurtful when you're going through this, you just know that people are going to say things with the best intentions that just might not come across, right? Right. And so I'll share some things that 
didn't necessarily come across right and then maybe what you could do instead. And mm -hmm. so uh, sometimes people, like I said, have the best intentions and want to like be hopeful and encouraging, but it's almost like too positive mm. for the grief that you're sitting okay. in. And so they would say, you'll have another or, oh my gosh, I had a best friend who went through this years ago and she got pregnant right after. Mm. Well, those things are really helpful. Mm. Like, yes, maybe you will have another. You don't know that though. Like right. that's not a guarantee for you. Or, you know, hearing somebody else's story of like a, a victory in their life is really awesome. But in the, you know, on the days that you're hurting the most, hearing something like that, the other person, like when I received that, uh, comment or it was in person I just kind of had to nod my head and go along with it and it's almost like mm. you're placing this expectation on them to be like yeah I'm fine mm. when you're actually not and so instead I think the best thing that you can do is instead of offering words that might come across wrong you can offer your prayers instead and so like praying for a person and you having an exchange with the Lord and praying over that person mm. is so much better than sharing something that might come across wrong because a text or a card or a phone call that says, Hey, I'm praying for you. Or can I pray with you right mm. now is will never come across wrong. Right, and so right. like for me, I would get those DMS and I would get those uh, text messages and phone calls, not only in the initial trauma that had happened, but even like months after. Mm. And so like if you're not experiencing that right now or you know someone who is, um, if you feel prompted, text them. Even mm -hmm. if it's been five months, mm -hmm. okay. like grief is grief. Right. It's going to last a right. long time. Okay. And I think, too, whenever you text them, even if it's been five months later, them receiving that message, it might be the thing that they need to hear on a hard day that reminds them, oh, yeah, God is still looking out for me. Wow. And that was really helpful. And it's just encouraging and helps mm -hmm. them keep going. And then... Another thing is that uh, we, as women, a lot of times like to fix things, you know, like mm -hmm. I immediately want to jump in and solve the problem. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you know, on some days that's fine, sure. kind of depending on where you are in your season and like how hard your day is or, you know, if you're actually having a good day, it might not come across like as hard, but especially whenever you're pouring your heart out to someone and they turn around and immediately try to fix it, mm. that's never really a good thing mm. unless you have also been through this as okay. well and then you can turn around and give advice because you've been there and maybe you have something to share with somebody that you wish somebody would have shared with you I would say in most instances if you have a mutual trust with that person absolutely share that with them because I think it'll be received differently but if you haven't experienced that and you're just coming in with mm -hmm. advice that's never really helpful okay. and so instead of offering advice mm -hmm. offer yourself to that person like mm -hmm. especially if you're a friend and so like instead of getting some unsolicited advice, I would rather get a phone call that says, hey, I'm on my way, where do you wanna go for lunch? Or uh, like if I reach out and just say, hey, I'm having a hard day, instead of trying to fix it, a response that says like, okay, do you want me to sit with you mm. and listen? Mm -hmm. Do you wanna talk about it? Um, do you wanna go do something fun? Like, how can I help you today? Okay. And so like offering yourself as a friend is much better than offering advice that okay. somebody doesn't need. That. Yeah, that's, so that's awesome. great. I just like Kaylee mentioned, I have not experienced mm -hmm. a miscarriage or the loss of a baby, but I have experienced the loss of my mom. And I resonate a lot to what you're saying about grief. I think that mm -hmm. grief is really hard. And I think that um, people sometimes misunderstand that like maybe grief is this timeline sort of thing. But I think yeah. grief is constant. Like yeah. you're always going to have this grief for your baby that mm -hmm. you lost. Um, and I think that so often we just forget that it's constant. And mm -hmm. the only way that I know how to equate it is like standing in the ocean and the waves of grief, they're consistent, mm -hmm. right? They're yeah. not going away. It's going to mm -hmm. go in and out and in and out. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's just going to hit your ankles. Yeah. And, then and those are the good days. Yeah. Those yeah. are the good days. It's not going to bother you. You're mm -hmm. going to barely even know it's there. Mm -hmm. But then other times the wave that hits is going to be massive. Mm -hmm. And it's going to cover your head and it's going to make you feel like you're drowning. And those are the days that it's hard. Mm -hmm. And those days aren't always 
like significant days like mm. yeah. the days that it's hard for you Kaylee might not have been your due date but right. it might have been a random Tuesday oh 100% you know? I remember several days like that especially within the first year like leading up to the due date where mm. it would just hit me like mm -hmm. on the way home or in the middle and in, in the middle of the grocery store or something like that and you just wonder like why and mm -hmm. it's on those days that it's especially helpful yeah. to have somebody like reach out yeah. and just let them know they're praying for you. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I love I love what you said. I think this is such good advice when you're mm -hmm. ministering to a friend or loving a friend that's really hurting. Um, mm -hmm. If they're sitting in a hole, they don't need you to get into the hole with them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they also really don't need you to pull them out of the mm -hmm. hole. Yeah. But maybe just sit at the hole. Have mm -hmm. your feet dangle in the hole and say, hey, mm -hmm. when you're ready to come out of the hole, yeah. I'm here. And... If you're not ready yeah. to come out of the hole, I'm I'm still here. Mm, I think yeah, that's, that's such perfect. great advice. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, Kaylee, I would love to know, um, how did this experience change your relationship with the Lord? Yeah, that's a big question because, like you said, grief is something that never really ends. And I think when significant events happen in your life that are good or the things that are really really hard that you go through it's like a it's like a, a scar you mm -hmm. know that can be healed but then you're constantly reminded of and so right. I would say I'm still being shaped mm -hmm. but uh two things I immediately thought of were the first I saw truly the hands and feet of Jesus mm -hmm. at work and I think um, you know, you hear things like that, like as Christians, we're supposed to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And you think that that might mean going on a mission trip or, or doing something significant like that, which is awesome. And you should mm -hmm. absolutely do that. Uh, but a lot of times your friends are your mission field. Mm. And whenever your friends are in deep suffering, uh, they're in a spot where they can't think about dinner. They mm. can't think about cutting the grass. Like Jared, my husband, couldn't do those things. He needed to be there for me. And so he had friends show up mm. and bring food or send us gift mm -hmm. cards and, you know, just pray over us yeah. and follow up with us and make right. sure that we were okay. And so I think when you're experiencing that, God really comes alive through other people. Mm -hmm. And it's something that shapes you in a way because it makes you see how living and active he truly is wow. because mm -hmm. how often do we forget that? You yeah. know, we read our Bibles and we close it and we put it away, but sometimes we forget. But when you're in that season, mm -hmm. you really yeah. see the Lord Gosh. showing up in your yeah. life. And then in turn, that makes you want to do the same right. for another person whenever they're suffering or you just see people differently yeah. because you just know there's not a person walking out there mm -hmm. who isn't going through deep suffering, even yeah. if it's not the same thing that I'm going through right now. And then the second thing that, uh, this is a little bit deeper, but we're going to go there. Yeah, it's going to be fine. Do it. Um, is it's a continual opportunity for me to trust. And trust is hard. Like, I think people have different themes for their life. And whenever you are a type A personality uh, and you really like things to be black and white and you like to know the plan, uh, well, that's part of what I get to do here at work is I figure out the plans. And that's right, awesome. But right. when it comes to my life, I don't get to do that. And that makes it really hard. Mm -hmm. um, but before I experienced a miscarriage, I also went through a season of um, a little over a year and a half of infertility, which mm -hmm. is a whole other level of trust in itself because that is also very very sad but it's very true is that you know some people are trying to get pregnant and then they get pregnant and they miscarry but then other people go through seasons mm -hmm. of infertility and finally get pregnant and then it's like mm -hmm. really really hard when you lose it and that happened to me but um mm. when I was walking through a season of infertility I remember talking to Meredith uh, the co-host of the podcast and I was like I want to do something uh, teaching on the podcast about being in the middle because that's kind of where I was like I was waiting for our miracle to happen mm -hmm. but I didn't know when it was going to happen and so I was learning how to trust then and God used that study opportunity and that teaching to actually minister to me later on whenever mm -hmm. I went into even deeper suffering like with a miscarriage um, but one of the things that I read and studied a lot was um, a verse in the Bible from Isaiah 40, uh, verses 25 through 28. And I'm just going to read it here and talk a little bit about it. And it says, To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these, he who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name. By the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. 
Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known, and have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Mm. And when I read that, we... In the podcast episode, we were talking a lot about God's holiness and why his holiness means that he's trustworthy. And uh, Joel read through my teaching and he taught me a lot. Joel Minamale, our director of theological research, we love him and he helps us make the Bible uh, relatable and understandable. And we were talking about God's holiness and the fact that he is holy means that he literally can do no wrong. Mm -hmm. He can't sin, Mm -hmm. which means like, I can't fathom not doing that because in my human mind, like I can do wrong. And so if I were to come up with the plans, they would be the wrong plans, Mm -hmm. you know, but, um, God in his holiness means that he's infinitely wise, means Mm -hmm. that he can't mess up, means that he holds account of every star in the universe. And like, Mm -hmm. you can't fathom his understanding because we're messed up. (laughs) He's Mm -hmm. not. And so I think when I read something like that, after having gone through a season like this, when I'm so tempted to ask why, and I have asked why, because it's hard. And if you've been through it, it's hard. I mean, of course you're going to ask why, Mm -hmm. but we, sometimes we're just not supposed to know. Mm. Like I don't get to know. I don't get, I, maybe I'm not supposed to understand this Mm. fully. Mm. Um, And I think that there's a season not, maybe not a season, but maybe there's a part whenever you are going from the, you know, the intense pain of you've just lost your baby and you're sitting in that initial grief, just like any loss, it's shocking, you know, and and you're experiencing emotions that of course make you want to ask why, but then whenever you kind of start to see the fog clear a little bit and God is so present with you through it all and through so many people, Mm -hmm. he's going to give you understanding. And I think that uh, for me, I kind of came to a place where I just said, okay, well, what? Wow. Like, you know, and uh, Nikki Kozieris has taught on the podcast before, too, about asking what instead mm-hmm. of why. And hearing her say that was just another validation of, like, I need, like, maybe the answer isn't what I'm supposed to know, mm-hmm. but I can ask mm-hmm. God what he wants to do with this. Wow. Um, and you know, I wish I was sitting here not talking about that, you know, and talking about God's faithfulness and having a baby on my lap that I would have had if I wouldn't have had a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. But I think that the beauty and that the, the beauty that suffering brings, it's terrible and Mm -hmm. we all go through it. And as long as we're on this side of eternity, life is never going to be perfect, but God will give you an opportunity to use Mm -hmm. what you've been through to be able to minister to other people. And, you know, on the podcast, we, we talk about biblical truth for any girl in any season. Well, a lot of people are in seasons of this. And so I can relate to other people now, or like I can come here on the morning show and I can talk to a lot of people Mm -hmm. who probably have never opened up about it and help them feel like, yeah, I totally get, I I get Mm -hmm. it now. This is what I've been feeling. And they can send this to their friend and they can finally create some common understanding or something like that. But Um, that's the beauty in what God does with your suffering. He allows you to relate to other people, uh, in ways that you never would have if you hadn't gone through something like that. That's really, it's such a good insight because we do get stuck in that place, you know, Mm -hmm. because we just, it's natural for us to ask why. Yeah. And I wanted to want, ask you for that woman on the other side of the screen right now, that's Mm -hmm. in that moment, maybe that wave is crashing over her right now. What would you say to her? What advice would mm-hmm. you share with her? Yeah. Well, first of all, I would say I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, there's no words that can accurately uh, describe the pain that you're feeling right now. Uh, but I understand. And um, Lisa Turkhurst, I think in her last book, Forgiving What You Can't Forget, or it might have just been like a video where she just started saying, if no one has borne witness to your pain, like, let me do that today. Well, let us do that for oh. you today. Mm-hmm. Like, they're are probably people watching who, like I said earlier, because you never realized it was a death and it wasn't just a note that your doctor gave you that said it was a miscarriage. Maybe you stuffed it and maybe you've been stuffing it for six months. Maybe it's been six years. Maybe it's been 16 years and you've been sitting with this pain and you've, Mm -hmm. it's shaped you in a way that needs to be reshaped, Mm -hmm. I guess. And so let us bear witness to your pain. But another thing is uh, my friend Lisa Allen shared with me, uh, one time in the very beginning of 
my loss. She said, Kaylee, grief is like a gentleman. Grief will wait for you. And so the reason that you need to, to share this with someone is that grief is waiting. Like if you don't address it, it's going to sit there until you do. And I think the longer you wait, the harder it is. You know, you can't just keep something like a death like this stuffed um, deep inside. And so that's where I would encourage you, like, sure, it's great that you can comment in the chat if you've never shared publicly before typing the words me too or I had a miscarriage when this that's the hardest thing that you can do and like I can imagine somebody on the other side is like filled with tears as they're typing it's really really hard to finally admit yeah Mm -hmm. this happened to me too but social media is a great place for you to to share that and maybe identify with some other people immediately but social media is not the place that you can be healed right church is a place that you can be healed. Talk to your pastor, talk to a trusted mentor, Um, find a really great godly Christian counselor who can help you walk through that. I did that and it was one of the best decisions that I made. And so I think once you can address it and then make steps towards Mm -hmm. healing, like it's going to be so much better. And then once Mm -hmm. you've been healed, you can then work towards help some helping somebody else heal. But right. you can't do that if you haven't processed through wow. your own pain. That's really yeah. good. That's great, Kaylee. I also want to just mention we do have a really awesome resource called mm-hmm. um, How to Hold on Hope When How to Hold on to Hope in Your Most Devastating Seasons. Mm-hmm. It's a free devotional that we mm-hmm. have on our website. And our friend Nicole's gonna put the link in the comments right now. Mm-hmm. If you're walking through something really hard, yeah. whether it was a miscarriage and pregnancy loss or you're grieving something, whether it's a loved one mm-hmm. or even just a dream, like mm. the devastation yeah. of a dream, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a really good devotional. And it's free. We just mm-hmm. want to make sure that you guys have access to it. So we're going to put it in the comments. Um, and we're just really grateful for this conversation, mm-hmm. Kaylee. I've been paying attention to the comments and uh, somebody said that they lost their son three years ago and that wow. this was encouraging and helpful for them. Wow. So, Kaylee, we're just grateful that you're here. We're grateful for you to share your story. Oh, and we're on. so grateful for all of you guys that tuned in and participated mm-hmm. in yeah. the conversation. Yeah, and Kaylee, you can even pop into the comments later and yeah, just I'd kind of to. respond with you guys. Um, but would you just pray for whoever is suffering mm-hmm. on the other side that the Lord would minister to them? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much that uh, you are with us, God. You are with us wherever we are right now in this room where we are live streaming from, and you are with every person watching wherever they're from, God, whenever they feel you the least. uh, God, we know that you're still with them then, and in the midst of their pain, you are with them, God. Um, And I just pray over the women who are suffering because they have lost a baby or lost multiple babies. God, I'm so, so sorry for their pain. Mm -hmm. And I know that uh, we wish that on this side of eternity, there was something that we can do to bring it back. But God, what we can do is just trust you. Mm -hmm. And I know that trusting you is the hardest thing that uh, we will ever do. But God, I know that on the other side of trust comes just a glory, uh, glory to you, God. And from giving you glory, even in the midst of our suffering, and by giving you glory with the trust that we give you, even whenever the days are hard, God, um, we know that you're shaping our loss into something that's beautiful, God. And so I just thank you for the redemption that we'll see one day in heaven whenever uh, things are finally made perfect and made right. But God, in this in-between season that so many of us are in where we are longing for what we've lost and hoping for one day whenever we finally get to see them made whole. God, I just pray that your peace would surpass all understanding uh, and that uh, we would remember daily that you were with us and you'll never leave us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Keely, for praying, for being here, for being so open about this topic that we know is touching so many. And we really appreciate that. And you know, before we go, we, we do want to tell you about one other little thing that we have. <laughs> um, so I am not going to model this for you, but yeah, we have your, our hair, <laughs> your hair is in a cute bun. It's too, like, up there. I think this is the third morning show where I have yeah. worn this cap to show you guys about it. It's very it. cute. It's yeah. very cute. So we have this awesome cap that are still available. There's some left, and we want to give you an opportunity to get this. And we have some other great apparel that we're going to drop the link 
in the comments as well. So if you want to check that out, that's still free. It looks so cute. cute. You can so run cute. through. And, you know, there's some July birthdays that are probably coming. August birthdays. My birthday is in July. My birthday is tomorrow. Wait. Oh, wait. It's I your know. birthday tomorrow? Yeah, it's a big one. Twice. Like we didn't know that. I know. I oh know. my goodness! How old are you? Tur I'm turning thirty. Oh So if my you're goodness. in the thirty club, please let me know. I yes. would love to know who my fellow comrades yeah. are. Is that the right word? Comrades. comrades. Yeah. That's great. We totally knew it was your birthday. We have yeah. a little surprise. Yeah, we have a little what? surprise for you. <gasps> what? Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. <laughs> I'm I'm dead. Look at how cute this is. <gasps> Happy birthday! I have a balloon <laughs> and a cake. We love you. We so love celebrate. you. Yay! 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 Do you think this is gonna set off the smoke alarm? Oh, I hope not. I hope. Oh, not. I really, really hope not. That would be very interesting TV. Oops. <laughs> well, we're so glad that you joined us today. Tell Kaylee happy birthday in the comments. We're so glad this you're is here. So cute. And we will see you next month, third Thursday. We'll see you there. Bye. Bye, guys.